Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode as we continue talking about how to save money on ships in Star Citizen. This week, we're going to talk about packages. Are they really a good way to save all that coin? A reminder that if you're looking to save this year, we are less than 250 subs away from someone taking home a Connie Taurus for free. Hit that subscribe button and comment to win. Details down in the description. Let's get those subs in so that we can give this baby away at IAE. To start off, let's first remember the first rule of Star Citizen fleet management and ship buying. Nothing is safe from melting. Of course, there is an exception to that, for those of you who got a friend to sign up <clears throat> and got an MPUV cargo with LTI gifted from the gracious heart of Dear Leader Roberts. It's a trap. I've covered this with a few people now, and as I always say, this can change, but currently that MPUV is not meltable. I don't mean in the scope of the rule either, I mean you literally cannot melt it on the CIG website. It's a gift from the Dear Leader and you will be keeping it. Now, I have advised a good number of people to be very careful of applying CCUs to that token, because you can't melt it. I'm going to use a real example here. Some of you may hear and say, hey, wait, that's my example, because multiple of you had the same idea. Let's say this IAE, you decide to take that MPUV token and turn it into a Perseus. You're not going to melt this beauty of a ship, because who would? I mean... It's more perfect than the glorious leader, or, well, you know what I mean. I love my Perseus. I can't wait to fly it, and yeah, generally speaking, it's going to be fantastic. Certainly in the no-melt category, because it's your dream ship. Even if you get others, this is one you're certainly going to keep. So you have a Perseus with LTI, and your starter pack, and a handful of other ships. Awesome. Total spend, we'll say, $1,200. Then at IAE this year, CIG releases package deals to celebrate the best content creators, and you're eyeing that lead pack, which happens to include the Perseus, three of the four ships you already had, but an extra two tokens as well, all for only $1,200. It has probably never occurred to some of you that if you melted out your entire hangar, you could rebuy this single package and LTI everything with the game pack, a free Squadron 42, extra money, perks all loaded in, a few moves here and there, and you get the fleet you had, but now it's all LTI'd, all packaged up with some extra savings, just so we're clear that lead pack has a total value of $1,600. Cha-ching! Your whole fleet and some extra goodies for just $1,200. bucks. 13 dollars when you get the CCUs added in to get that last ship back. There's only one problem, that MPUV token holding more than 50% of your total fleet value, and it can't be melted. No lead pack for you, trapped. When we talk about traps, we're not saying you're going to be in a mouse trap, spine broken, unable to play. We're talking about positions where you can't make moves, smart moves, moves you down the road might want to make, moves like the one I just mentioned, you might not have even been aware of making just yet. Which brings me then to the package trap that lead package might not be so great after all. The problem with packages are they're all or nothing deals. Now, when I say package, you might be thinking I'm talking only about concierge packages, but those are not the only packages out there. There are tons of smaller packages released at sales combining a new release with some other ships or so on or so forth. One of the most popular of these packages are the LTI token packs. You know, like when they offer you three $25 LTI tokens bundled together for $60 instead of the $75 you would have otherwise paid for them individually. The common belief is to put your no-melt ships into these packages because obviously you can't melt one ship in the group, so you'd have to melt the whole group. It's a good idea, though, because you save really big money on the packages. The larger the package, most people assume, the larger the discount, which is both incorrect and a topic for another day. I wouldn't refute that combining packages with CCU chaining will result in some cases entirely free ships. My 600i was technically free in the package I currently have. We're not talking small ship discounts necessarily. The problem is these packages make fleet management decisions way more complicated and assume you won't someday change your mind. 
You do know what they say about assumptions, right? Well, put that down in the comments. The thing is, your mind may change, especially with concepts that are not yet released. Either because a new ship comes out that does exactly what you liked about that one you already have, but you like less, or a ship comes out and it's not as cool as you thought it might be. More often than not, plenty of fleet buyer pick up the new hotness and then change their minds later. Never forget rule number one. Everything is meltable, or should be if you planned correctly. whoop de doo you'll always have an MPUV cargo, I guess. It may be because a new package is released that has a ship you always wanted but could never win the F5 wars to get, like the Drake pack and its two Krakens. If you melt out that other package you applied all those CCU chains to get, the savings you had will be gone because the price-locked CCUs are not recoverable. To rebuild that part of the fleet, you're going to have to resort to current pricing. Or, because you can't get CCUs to that one ship anymore because CIG doesn't offer them, you decide you can't melt that package and lose that one ship, even if all the other ships were replaceable or irrelevant to you now. I guess you don't get to join the Kraken Owners Club after all. Which brings us full circle. If you had instead built that fleet on individual tokens, paying $75 for the three individual tokens instead of saving $5 on each one, you would now enjoy maximum flexibility. You can pull off the Drake pack and keep the irreplaceable ship. Release the Kraken! You can melt out the ships you don't care about anymore, keeping the ones you do to grab that really cool new concept bomber inspired by Lednap. Or you could even give one to your buddy who loves that one ship you have that you don't even care about anymore. Those special edition best in show versions or 300 reworked paint editions you can't buy anymore are now safe. Saving money is only a tiny piece of proper fleet management. The Hercules is one of my favorite ships. The A2 in my hangar is there for sentimental reasons and not because I think bombing things in Star Citizen will have any real value. I would have told you a year ago I would never melt that ship. Certainly safe then to put into a package, it won't ever be melted out. Except I have sentimental value to having a bomber in my hangar, not necessarily the A2. If CIG released a $200 bomber, I'd probably check that sentimental box with that instead. And now the major value tied up in my A2 becomes liquid. Yes, it's cool, but my love for the Herc is more found in the C2 as a cargo guy. Better value for my needs. If it's trapped in a pack, all I can do is CCU it to something higher up. If it's alone on a standalone token, as mine is, I can melt it and apply its value in a dozen different places if I choose. You don't think so today, but even that dream Perseus might not forever be your dream. I can today easily afford the Corvette I wanted as a teenager, but the truck I own today better suits my adult needs. It's easy to get caught up in the I saved $20 getting this ship scenario. You may someday find spending that extra $20 allowed you the ability to make different moves, saving even more money on a different ship, because you had the ability to liquidate and restructure your fleet. The Carrick is one of my favorite ships, a no-melter, and it's the bedrock of my fleet today. However, after this IAE, there won't be one in the Dreadled fleet. Rule number one. And unlike previous annual sales, my personal goals this year are cementing the fleet I want, not saving money on the even bigger fleet I don't need. So let me know down in the comments your plans for IAE this year. Make sure to share this with your friends. Come hang out on the Discord and ask all your questions. Like and subscribe if you haven't, and I will catch you all next time. <laughs>